this is not going to be pretty is my expectation welcome back to another episode of sailing windrose a video on life boat for lithium batteries in a waterproof casing a long video as it was a long process and it took me a long time to decide and there are a lot of steps and we go into them in every detail i think it's a very instructive video i did it together with ignacio my neighbor who knows everything and also on batteries let's just plunge right in and uh, get to the content shall we so ignacio how long did it take me to buy this to decide on actually to buying decide. it um, <laughs> some months <laughs> some months i think at a year and a half at least probably and actually ignacio when we were sailing i was convinced yeah because when i wanted to start the engine on our sail the battery was that's dead. a horrible moment when you're excited that's a horrible moment when yeah. you want to go unfortunately obviously ignacio had a spare battery who doesn't have a spare battery yeah who doesn't exactly? Anyway. Ah. Oh. Let's do that again. There you go. Ah. There Dang you it, go. even more boxes. Yeah, 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 they come nicely packed. That's good. That's good. the bus bars. Bus bar? Yep. Bus bar. This is a bus bar. You are looking at 230 amp hours worth yeah. of. Holy shit! <laughs> yeah, they're heavy. Lithium-ion phosphate. Lithium-ion <laughs> phosphate batteries. <laughs> yes. Yeah, baby. So, 12 volts. 12 volts, three, 230 amp hours. Oh, I see the manual. Good. Nice. Good One, voltage. two, three, four nominal voltage, 3.2 volt boxes, making... 13.4. 13.4, which is equivalent to 12 yep. uh, volt, uh, which we're going to create a pack of, obviously, but... Um, at least this is it. So as Ignacio has already built multiple packs, I thought it was best to just ask him the questions and then do as he instructed. So do we need to open one of these boxes? Yeah, open them all. Open them all? Yeah, yeah. we we'll just start testing. All right. So, so we, what can we say about this? this what can we say? So these are lithium, so high energy density, meaning small space, small volume, lots of capacity. But this one particularly, uh, different chemistry than normal, which you will find everywhere. And one of the features is that they don't explode. If, which is good. Yeah, for a boat, that's, that's a nice feature. So if something will, were to happen, like if this gets punctured, this is a soft aluminum casing. So you need to have some care with it. They expand a little bit when they are uh, full. This little window. This one. If there was some kind of short or damage to the cell or any kind of um, thermal runaway event, this, instead of blowing up, will start venting gas Ooh, from good. this little window. So this is a relief valve. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's so worst case scenario, this will start venting toxic gas. Oh. So oh, it's better than blowing up, though. Yeah, yeah. So it's safer. <laughs> I mean, you die slowly instead of well, with a bang. Only if you don't leave. Uh, we need to unwrap all of them because what we are start. we going to do with these? First, we're going to check how they arrive in terms of state of charge. We're yeah. going to see the voltage. And I, you told me I need to be watchful with... Uh, yes, so these are low voltage, so it's very safe to touch them. There's yeah. no, no problem. Your heat body resistance is, is big enough. But they have a lot of capacity. So if you short them with something metallic or wire or something, it's very, they're going to heat up very quickly. They're gonna there is a very fast reaction to exactly. your action. And, you know, fire hazard. So you don't want that. Obviously, we are worried that we are having second-hand cells. And, yes, uh, that's a big risk. Why is that an issue? Because they're very expensive. Uh, yes, and at the that moment, I agree on. That's also why it took so long, yeah. boys and girls. <laughs> There's a very high demand at the moment. Also, so there is a lot of room for, you know, shady... Practices, but yeah. I bought them via Amazon with the re with the right of return, so that's also yes. why I'm unwrapping them rather safely. Yep. And they arrived in a couple of days. Two days. Yeah, very good, actually. Which was very good. Yeah. So Amazon, thank you. Yeah. Very nice. 
Uh, it's a new company, uh, at least that I have not seen any sales of them, but the price was very fair. Nice. This little sticker here, the QR, mm -hmm. is to check the status of the warranty of them from the actual manufacturer. Oh. So this should tell you warranty related information. All right. We're almost done, boys and girls. It's not that big, eh? 230 amps. It's crazy. It's 230 amps. If you look at what I have now, which is 105 times 2, which is 205, but then... It's actually half of that. Half of that, because half yeah. of the capacity goes bust. Yeah. This actually needs a little explanation. If you have normal lead-acid batteries, and they are 105 amp hours, you can only take like 40% of their capacity before you have to recharge them again. Because if you discharge them at a too low level, they actually break or they don't really like that. So this opposed to LifePo 4, which you can use for 100%. So I had two 105 amp hour batteries, which is 210 times 40% is 84 amp hours. And now I have 100% of 230 amps, which is a lot more, namely 2.7 times as much. So the big benefit of having lithium on board of your boat is that you have a lot more capacity and it takes a lot less space comparatively. But um, let's continue and uh, see what is the next step. We're going to test. The, the state of charge or the voltage rather. Okay. Anyway, we'll read it uh, and you'll touch it. I expect it to be around 3.3 something. So let's have a look. Three, two, One. three, two. Okay. 32, 32. That's fine. We want consistency. Ooh. 32, 33. That's a very nice sign straight away. 32, 25. Okay, that's fine. Mm. That's a, yeah, that's fine. 32, 31. Yeah, so it's up to a tenth of a, of a yeah, 10 millivolts different or 20 millivolts. That, that's good. That's a good start. Yeah, that's good start. Good, that's a good start. That's a good start. Yes. So they're not equally charged, but very much sim very similar yeah. from each other, right? In terms of voltage. But again, because of the charging curve of this chemistry, that's not really a good indication. No. This is just a you know rough idea. If you look at the loading curve of these batteries, all between 20 and 80 percent is relatively flat so you can get a voltage and if they're all a bit same -ish, if you receive the pack that is a good news but you don't really know at what state of charge they come how much energy is already in the battery so the first thing that we need to do is to top load them which basically means that you load all the batteries to their maximum capacity you fill them up a hundred percent and only then you make the pack and start charging it up and down. So at least then you know that there is, that there is not one battery that is already at a higher state of charge, which will stop loading the other batteries when it reaches 100%, because that is basically what will happen. The BMS will see there is a voltage at max. It will kill the loading, and then you will have a battery, which is a battery pack, which is not 100% loaded. Hence, the top loading is important. And then how to do it, Ignacio explains. So what I do, I charge um, them individually. What we do is we set the target voltage on the power supply yeah. and it will start pushing amps. We're gonna set the target voltage. So the cell operates between two volts yeah. and, and 3.65. 3 5. 5. Okay, so yeah? it's not... So yeah. you should not You should never go over. go over that. Yeah, that's that gonna see. decrease the lifespan of the thing and also the, the if you go down, but also look at the operating temperatures. These batteries don't like cold, Discharging minus 40. Yeah, discharging before charging. Operating temperature. What I would say is never charge them below zero degrees. Oh. Because you damage them. All right. Yeah. Good. Another feature of these batteries is that they take charge at 0 0.5 C. 1 C means yeah. the capacity. So, for example, this is a 200, uh, 230, 230 amp hour battery. That means mm -hmm. that at 1 C discharge, you can pull 230 amps constantly from it. Yeah. That's what it means. But charge? Charge is 0.5 C. 115. Exactly. We're going to charge with 10 amps now. So this is very Ten slow, amps. very good, gentle. Good. You can observe as well that when the delta between the voltage of the battery and the target voltage is high, this is going to push a lot of amps 
mm. because the resistance is not that different, mm. the expected resistance for the battery. But as they get uh, close, it's going to be very slow. I know you're a patient man, so I think you can, <laughs> <laughs> you can handle it. <laughs> you hear it on the internet? I am a patient man. Good, good. So to top charge them, we decided on proven technology, technology that is also used in laboratories. Good stuff, but a bit slow. We found later. So you have amps, uh, cores adjustment and fine adjustment. So yeah. faster, slower. Yeah. Uh, and this is voltage. So at All the right. moment I was charging my bag. Full bag. As a one full bag. Yeah, 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 yeah. But now we're gonna do independence. So we're gonna lower the voltage. 3.7. Huh? Because the jug is 3.65 oh, yeah. and I have only one decimal. Yeah, okay. 3.7. So 3.7. And now you have fine adjustment, so you can very so now this is without load. When we put them with load, the voltage is gonna drop. Mm -hmm. right? but that's mm -hmm. that's expected. So what do you mean with the fine adjustment? Yeah, I did not see anything change. No, because I have no more decimals. Ah, okay. But we will see with the, with the with the multimeter. We're gonna connect the multimeter at the same time. Oh. It doesn't give you more precise. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. So we're gonna do. Please don't put negative, them the wrong way. Negative first. <laughs> yep. Okay, and we're gonna turn them off so we don't have a spark. Turn it off. This so is we a don't capacitor have a spark. On, on inside, so we're gonna let it discharge. Yeah. Okay, and now this, this is set. Boom! So it's pushing, pushing five amps now. something amps. Yeah. I turned it off actually. That's fine. Three point two four five. Point six. Point seven. <laughs> and it's gonna keep going. And eventually three point six five. Oh, I actually, but it will not uh, beep, blink, whatever. Do something. No, tell me that it's, it's there. It equalizes the voltage. It's not gonna have. It's going to have enough resistance that no more amps will fit in. Ah, so it will just stop pumping amps. Yeah, yeah, okay. Basically. So if this one is at zero, I'm ready. Yes. Exactly. What do I do? Go for the next one. That was easy. Yeah. <laughs> and boring because this is a waiting, a waiting uh, game. So following this route, you will find it is really slow, really slow, even though I'm a patient man. So we decided to speed up the process a little bit. Exactly. So we're in the process of balancing them out. It's yeah. taking too long, so indeed. So one of them is uh, higher than the rest. But we're going to fast charge them all. And yeah, top them up later, individually. And then one of them is going to be my negative and one is going to be my positive. Correct. At each end, that will be the main pack. So as long as they are connected in series, which amps, uh, adds the voltage. Which what I want. think this is the most scary thing I did in a long time. Oh, this is fine. So you want... Me to put that on there. Go for it. So this will be the positive. This is the positive, yeah. The main, black, yeah. Gray, black, gray. So that's good. Mm -hmm. Put it on. Yeah, go for it. Sparks? No, no sparks. Un until you close the circuit, there's going to be no sparks okay. of any kind. No sparks. Do we need one or two of these things? One. That one goes there. Very good. Excellent. Yeah, that's it. Now, on a normal lead acid battery, there's just a minus and a plus, and then inside the battery stuff happens. I don't know what, but something. But with this separate pack, with the four cells, we basically need to add a two, which is a smart switch, uh, and it's called a battery management system, or BMS, uh, that kills the loading or the, dis the, the charging or the discharging of the battery at given parameters. So let's say the bottom uh, voltage line of two volts and the top uh, one at 3.6. Uh, but for this, the BMS needs to know what the state of charge of each cell is. Hence, it is connected to the minus of the pack and every cell has a different report line to the BMS. A report line, by the way, that can also be used to balance these cells by putting additional current or less current to either cells in the pack, so. So we put uh, shoes on all the... Uh, the leads for the, the leads. balancing, the balancing leads for the VMS. That's what they call it. The balancing leads for the VMS, right. Yes. Okay. That's good. So now. Right, so we have, our, so this is our main pack positive. Yeah. Why is this one and not this one? Because this one is no not connected. Exactly. And the SDM. current runs like this. Exactly. So plus goes in. Choo, 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 choo. Perfect. So, this one goes yeah. where? On the negative. Perfect. Go one. for it. Yes. Very good. 
Uh, it's kind of gonna be hanging like this because the it's, side of it. Yeah, because the, it goes like that. Okay. So actually, put it on top of the yeah. I put okay. a little nut. Yeah. This is the, your now. This is your battery minus. Yeah. Your pack okay. minus. I, I get it. But so, I want to put this somewhere in such so a way that it is not just yeah let's, dangling about. Let's put it like this then. Okay. Do you have some yeah, exactly. tape or some yeah, uh, something? Okay. So this is tight-ish. That's tight-ish. Now, so now this is one. number one. Goes there. Number two is this one. Always hand tight, tight enough. Yeah. Okay. For for our purposes now, this is fine. Okay. How nice. It so is, what uh, you just said is that normally you would put this temperature sensor in the pack, but because we are in a confined area here, it's not going to freeze. Yeah, exactly. just leave as it is. So when you actually build a pack, this is this is important. Yeah. Now we are in now a temperature regulated yeah. environment, okay. so it's not, not really an issue. So the BMS requires power to work. So it will use the fourth lead and this to power itself, mm -hmm. right? Let's try to see if this will wake it up. So then you need to get the handy app. It proved to be alive and kicking. And looking at the uh, at the app, it showed a about 25% state of charge, which was a little bit of an estimate. Uh, but it also showed the individual cells, uh, the lowest one at 3350, and the highest one at 3426. So in order to charge the full pack, we were now going to add the charger to it, which is a multi plus 500, and put in some juice. So start connecting the wires and be aware of sparks. You have something to with, connect this. With the bolt, with two, oops, sorry. I should have known that, that's fine. That's just discharging, don't worry about it. Good, it's off, we'll disconnect this just in case. It's just the capacitor on this thing charging up. Actually, the, the proper way to do that, now this is the part, because the capacitor charge is with the resistor. You do this with the resistor, and that will slowly charge the capacitor, so oh, it's never okay. spark. So now we have a live setup. Auto switching, inverter, UPS mode, all of that is on when this is yeah. on. Okay. Off is off, and mm -hmm. this is just for charging. Yeah. You only want to use it as a charging, so that's what okay. I'm going to do. But you're so going to put it off first? It's off. Now. It is off now, okay, yes. yeah. Uh, we're going to put the input. Yeah. AC input, yeah. and then we're going to click charge, and it will go yellow. After it's doing some checks now, if it's happy, it's going to go yellow. Wait Be for happy! It. Wait for it. Come on. There you go. Oh, it sounds like it's doing something. Yeah. <laughs> it's doing 20 amps. So now we're going to check. And we should see around 20 amp amps input. This is, takes a while for loading. There you go, 20.5. It's charging and it's balancing. The balancing is acting. So of course, now they're getting charged fast, so the voltage is gonna ramp up faster. Yeah. Look at how good it looks and <laughs> how this is like, this could be one big explosion actually. <laughs> this is how it looks, just like well, really messy. But gas venting in, in the gas worst case scenario. Yeah, 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 <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I was just wondering, what do I do if the whole thing starts fire and I just run. I think run, yeah, yeah, exactly. This one is now at the right state, so we kind of need to go back to the old box and do it for the other ones as well. But what we were doing was good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it was just slow. It was correct, it but was just, just slow. slow. Okay. This was trying to speed things up, basically. It's not because it was wrong, no, it's no. just to speed yeah, things yeah, up. Yeah. So after boosting them with the MultiPlus, topping them off with the lab charger, it was time to see our results. The results of all our efforts and endless waiting, because this boys and girls took about three weeks, I think. Hello. Hello. We're back in the vlogging cave. Yes, we are. What are we going to do, Ignacio? Right, so finally, after a while, uh, it took a little more than we expected to, mm -hmm. to charge the batteries, but we did it properly and very carefully. So Very carefully. So, yes, indeed. So now we're going to... Nerve-wrackingly <laughs> carefully for some <laughs> yes. people, because it almost took two weeks. Yeah. Yeah. Then we're still not there, actually, but we've had enough of it. Well, it was a long time, but okay. okay. So now the fun starts. So now right. we have a pack built as a pack. And so yeah. We're going to start using it as such. We're not going to address cells individually anymore. We're going to use it as a big battery now. Yeah, we already connected everything. Yes. We have numbers on the wires going to the BMS, which is stuck back there. Yep. And now we're going to test for capacity. So Which now we're going to see how much they actually give. They should give around 230 amp hours. 
So we have this little capacity measuring thingy. This is not little actually. If no, you look yeah. at my hand, it's huge. Yeah, fair enough. And it has a bright display. Yeah, there are two modes. So you can basically uh, create heat with the power that you're pulling from the battery and dissipate the heat. So basically burn the power or tr convert it into heat. But because we want to be ecological and efficient, <laughs> we're going to reuse the power. We're going to pass yeah. it through this thing. And we're going to use this fancy nice adapter to 12 volts to actually charge another battery. The um, Blue Eddy. The Blue Eddy. So allow me to promote the Blue Eddy a bit because I really like it. I have it right here, actually. And besides a very good light, which also has an SOS function, it's just a power box, quite literally. You have your AC here. You can run 600 watts of it. It's 268 watt hours of energy in the box. It has a nice display, which is really clear. It has two normal USB, one USB-C. It has a cigarette lighter and it has two uh, 5 volts, I think. 12 volt DC, 10 amp hour plugs. You can charge it with a regular AC or you can put your solar panels on it, which is the same plug as that one. Um, and I use this a lot. And not only also to charge my phone wireless, but also to walk around with it on the street and, well, not on the street, but to, to bring it along in the car, in the campsite, uh, on the boat, as a portable power pack. And I really, really like it. It really works very well. So I just wanted to shamelessly push this product. I bought it, so don't worry about it. Um, but obviously 268 watt hours at 12 volt is not all that much. So let's continue with the big pack. And we're going to use this at the same time to charge a bicycle battery because we want to store the power. We don't want to waste it. So my wife is actually liking this. <laughs> she doesn't know yet, but uh, right. how so, do we set it for measuring? So, right. So first, what do we see? it's telling you the voltage of the pack, which is 13.7, give or take. So that's mostly full. And now we're going to set the, the amps. So we're going to try and pull around 10 amps to begin with. And this is going to see the total capacity. So in theory, with 230, 10 amps, this can run for about... That's 130 watts. 23 hours. 23 hours. Okay. Yeah, exactly. Uh, yes, so now it's all set. We're going to start pulling 10 amps and we're going to start right now is using 10 amps indeed 136 watts actually uh, from the battery pack from the battery pack yes this it is doesn't now... even move oh. ha -ha. good so now that we're doing this we're also going to be reusing it because now it's burning it so now oh, and th look this is charging already so now we're going to see the input watts here which is still says zero for some reason oh there you go oh wow si 70 watts so out of the 100... 90 no that's good so out of 135, we are reusing around 100. So we're losing 30 watts. We're burning 30 watts. But we can lower the amps. So Sorry, that has a maximum input of 10 yeah. amps. So this is not changing, so it's good. And now I'm changing this. So now we are inputting 107 and we are getting 97. So we're only losing 10. I never used it in this mode, in the mm. pass-through mode. So this is the first time. Maybe it's just the resistance of the blue eddy. I guess. I'm not quite sure why. Uh, but it's doing 8 amps at the moment. So just to make the point, if you want to know how much capacity is in the battery, this is one way of testing it. And you can burn all the stuff, but you can also try to store it. So we were pushing it to the Blue Eddy, but actually the Blue Eddy was full at a certain point in time. So I started scavenging in the house for other stuff with the battery and charge it at the same time. We're now at almost 40 amp drone from the system. Still running, checked all the connections, they're nice and cold, so that's good. Uh, I also checked the percentage on the BMS and that sets 17%, uh, which if you do the math actually adds up to about that, so roughly. No connectors are warm. Uh, I connected my headphone, I connected my laptop, and I connected another laptop. Uh, so now we're outputting 100 and we're inputting 50, which is interesting. 
So uh, I'll just let it run like this for a bit. This one will be full quite fast, but those two are both almost empty. So that will be drawing quite a bit of current. So there you go, 130. But there was more. So I looked onwards for other stuff to charge. Figured it might be good to charge everything we have. So I now put the, the mega block on it so I can charge everything, my shaver, my toothbrushes and my power tool batteries. It was time to check how much energy did we pull from the LIFO pole. 230! Yay! And the second part, which was really good news. 239 amp hours from the pack, which is a Good and solid number, is what my neighbor said. Uh, probably this one is not charged. No, it's 46%. That's really funny. I don't know what I put on it, but something is pulling a lot of energy. But um, that's that's good. 239 amps for uh, a 230 pack. Oh, as it is winter time and uh, we are all doing jobs in our boat. We also had a chat with Bart. He visited uh, Bart, my follower that I met in Medenblik. Um, and it was interesting because he is uh, also considering his wiring and electricity setup. So we had a good discussion on that. Uh, obviously, we visited the boat. We showed him around and we compared uh, the differences between our boats. And last but not least, we had a nice cup of tea where uh, he handed me over the Zeile Trimgids which is really, really nice because for this summer, I'm definitely going to use that. So Bart, thank you very much. And uh, yeah, I hope that we bump into each other again coming here, but uh, let's go back to the batteries because uh, now we know how much capacity is in there. It's just a matter of putting it all together and putting it in a box. How applicable is this? You order a box from Bax. You get a huge box which says we support your stage. But how do they know I'm YouTubing about this? Well, anyway, we got it. Let's open it up and see. Oh. Oh. What is this for a wrapping? I have bought something beautiful. That we will not see a lot, but every time if I look at it... Oh, look at that! Come on, Box! What is this? I was already wondering, like, why is it so big? Could you get me a knife, please? Okay, look at this! It is amazing! Oh, beautiful! I bought a yellow box. Is it just a yellow box? <coughs> it's not just a yellow box. It's a yellow box. A yellow BMW International Type 4000 box, flight case, you can also call it. Not really a cheap one, to be honest. Actually, quite expensive. But then again, fit for the purpose. And the good news, because you can measure it, but it, in the end, the proof is in the pudding. It fits. I think this really fits. This is really thin. It's leveled. It has a waterproof seal. And it has a fluffy thingy here. And the only thing that needs to go in is the BMS with the temperature sensor. I can connect it all the way here. And I have room here. This is like really thick material, by the way, to create connectors really really fits like a glove so that's super cool really happy with that <laughs> it even has an auto pressure valve how handy is that so it will auto vent if one of them actually breaks the trick with the box is that i wanted to put the battery poles on the outside. Reason being, the battery pack and the BMS are inside in a hopefully watertight compartment. And when on the outside it would shortcut because of water or something else, the BMS would actually switch it off. 
and kill the circuit. So as long as everything inside stays dry, on the outside, it doesn't really matter if there is a short. So let's make some battery poles, shall we? We already have one down and the other one to go. It's quite an expensive box, so it doesn't really feel good, but there's no other way to do it. Just drill the hole. Back now. One hundred euro box. Well, if it's water tight, it'll keep my batteries dry. And then, in case of emergency, if I'm actually able to get the batteries, then at least the batteries are dry. Super nice, a really good fit, that is, I'm really happy with how that turned out. Let's do the other one. So everything is connected, on the inside it looks really nice and tidy, not sure if you can actually see it, but it looks really good. So now the only thing that I need to do is to see it's waterproof which means that tomorrow i will take it for a swim so the box is ready and i have a cunning plan to test it which is i want to take it in the water to see if it's waterproof the only small detail is i don't have a bathtub so I have to do that outside and it's December, which might not be the best of ideas. The neighbor is looking at me like, what are you going to do? Ah, I understand. Check out the scenery. It's not even bloody sunny here. Well, can't complain, it's the Netherlands, right? Let's get this show on the road. This is not going to be pretty. All right, well, there we go. Box in the water. Oh. One more time. Come on, wake up. Wake up. Cool. Looks out of the water. kind of annoyed me that I was uh, squeaking uh, like a squirrel uh, down there so I figured let's get control and be in the water and be a man for a bit
if you think it's nice how distracted you can get while doing one thing. I wasn't in there to prove to be a man. I was in there to test whether the box was waterproof or not. So let's get out and check it. Whew. That was nice. So if it is waterproof, I can deactivate the battery with the BMS. And then if there's no water inside, I can carry this along wherever I go to use it as a power source, which would be extremely handy. that I don't have any leakage from the box by opening it. Okay, let's see. Yeah, I think it's dry. It for sure didn't leak by the connectors. It's dry. <laughs> uh, there is some, but this is leakage from. Super nice. That makes me extremely happy. So yes, now really the only step was putting the batteries in the box, wire it all up, fire it all up. So the box is dry, even if you swim with it. That means that I now need to reorder the battery pack, put all the wiring on and make sure that it actually works as designed and put it in the box in such a way that it will not move around when you are walking around with it. So um, let's get started. Okay, the setup where I am going for minus, which will be connected to the minus over there. Going to the plus, going to battery two, minus, plus, minus, plus, minus, plus, four, going to positive there. And I want them uh, in the top because that way I can keep the wires short. Then everything is connected with a wire. This is quite nicely out of the way from this area, which needs to connect here. There's no fiddling about, which you else get. So I think this is it. There are multiple ways to roam, but I decided in alignment with Ignacio to tape the pack into one. So I used double-sided tape to connect the cells and then I used duct tape and electrical wiring tape to tape the whole thing together to make it one sturdy pack. And after that, it was just a matter of wiring it up. And I didn't use the bus bars, but I used normal wires to create some flexibility if the cells expand a little bit or detract a little bit. Okay, in essence, it's ready. Battery one, negative. Going to positive, negative, positive, negative. Battery three, positive, negative. Battery four, positive. Connect it to the box. Connect it to the BMS, and we're done. There it is. And this is the moment we've all been waiting for. Well, at least me. Let's look what's in the box. 230 amp hours LiFePo 4 battery. With the BMS, safely wired safely tucked in there so it can't go anywhere with all the compartments to save the bms to clear the cables to clear all the hard stuff to secure the connectors here and everything wired in such a way that if the pack would actually move there is some flexibility but i don't think the pack will actually move there is one thing i need to do that's this one. Tuck it in. There we have it. Everything is tucked in. Yeah, what shall I say? Super happy with it. And now the big test will be, will it run my trusted little Blue Eddy? And for that, I bought this very simple device. So let's see.
the black one is already on. You can hardly see it, but it's there. The red one is now on. Now let's see what happens if I plug this in there. It's charging! Oh my god, it works! <laughs> it works! I made a power box! Oh, I love it! Yes! It works, Ignacio! <laughs> Everything is wired! With your new wire, it works like a bloody charm. See, run! Ooh, nice! Thank you! Long video. I hope you thought it was informative. If you've liked it, leave a like. If you have a comment, which you obviously have, leave it below. And if you want to see more, hit subscribe. Because next time, obviously, I need to build the battery in the box. And as you can see... Oh. There is work to do. See you next time. It's a bit of a shame that it's like one centimeter too deep, but I think if I chip in this board a bit or chip in this a bit, or maybe, yeah, I don't know, maybe cut out even a little bit, it should fit in sideways, but um, yeah, it's, it's really like a centimeter. So I have to think about this.